Thank you for joining us for this practice update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Joining me today is Dr. Helen Shi. Dr. Shi is the director of the CNS service in the Department of Radiation Oncology at Mass General Hospital. Dr. Shi, great to have you back. Thank you very much for having me. And we're here in beautiful San Francisco at the Society of Neuro-Oncology meeting in 2017. And first, let's just start to talk a little bit about some new developments in radiation therapy for gliomas and glioblastomas from SNOW 2017. Absolutely. I want to talk first about Javari et al., that report, the analysis of patient outcomes of, with proton radiation therapy for primary gliomas from the National Cancer Database, the RTHP25. What were the findings of this study, and what are the implications for use of this radiation modality? Sure. So uh, proton radiation therapy is a relatively new uh, radiation therapy modality um, that's increasing in uh, prevalence and use. I would say worldwide. Um, its own history in the U.S. began at Massachusetts General Hospital um, about 40 plus years ago, but it has, because it's a complex technology um, and is very expensive, requires uh, a lot of um, both physics and engineering um, uh, uh, input that's that's unique to that a photon based radiation therapy. Uh, it's a technology that's not easily uh, deployed uh, and expanded mm -hmm. upon, and particularly costs. I think is makes it a little bit more prohibitive uh, without good data supporting its um, efficacy and or superiority of the value of adding that to, as an armor material within radiation therapy. Um, and so one way to, to really assess whether there's value to protons is really to yes. look retrospectively, how mm -hmm. have you done? Um, uh, that in parallel was photon, uh, with, excuse me, yes. that in, 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 yes. in addition to prospective data, which is, of course will be invaluable. So the Javardi and colleagues looked at the National Cancer Database and culled and found of 20, almost 23,000 um, glioma patients, this is all grades, grade one through four, they identified about 180 patients who actually received proton radiation, again, all grades, and they've looked basically to see like what could they um, find from these patients. There was a prevalence of patients that tend to be younger in age, that lived in metropolitan areas, that had better surgeries. Um, grade one to two patients fared better than grade three to four patients. I would say all of these findings are consistent with what we would expect with proton radiation. We do see, uh, with a limited resource, we tend to ration it to people who we think are going to fare better, who have more quality life years yes. to benefit from proton radiation. So these are going to be the younger people who are feeling better, doing better, have a better performance status at baseline, who can seek out these um, uh, unique treatment opportunities. Um, some of them are on protocols. Um, and I think these are tend to be probably more educated patients um, who are um, investigating for these uh, opportunities. Excellent. I also want to draw some attention to stereotactic radiosurgery. I know it's received some interest in the management of glioblastoma. And authors Matsutani and Iwadate report experience with this approach in RTHP34. Can you discuss the study and compare some of these results with your own experience? Sure. So stereotactic radiosurgery has been something that's been tried in the management of glioblastoma. I think the RTOG 9305 was a prospective study randomizing patients who received fractionated radiation therapy with or without the addition of SRS. That ended up being an equivalent study, not showing superiority to adding SRS. And so that had dampened some of the enthusiasm for it. But I think similar to the use of bevacizumab in treating glioma patients, it's really individualized. And certainly, I think all of us as practitioners have seen cases where you get this tiny little glioblastoma, whether it's a primary disease or a current disease, and it just seems so compelling to treat with sure. stereotactic radio surgery. So we do. And oftentimes, you know, we discuss the benefits and risks with patients, what we knew, our rationale. Um, and in these investigators, they had 100, I want to say 18 patients with glioblastoma. And amongst them, they found nine who received SRS, either as upfront in, I think, two cases or in a recurrent setting in seven cases. Um, and at least the preliminary data seems promising. Uh, there was two patients that were treated up front that survived, I think, approximately two years, which I think is uh, promising. Sure. But as with any new therapies or changes, what we consider a standard of care therapy, I think the one thing that was missing there, which we want to know a little bit more about, is toxicity. Of course. So SRS, does stereotactic radio surgery, delivering high-dose radiation to a small area tends to be obliterative, um, which is a good thing. We want to kill the tumor cells. Of course. But any normal tissue cells that are in there also uh, have the risk of being significantly injured. Um, so that's where we'll want to see, not just in terms of acute side effects, but long-term. If these patients end up becoming longer and longer-term survivors, we want to know whether or not we're causing harm. What are the trade-offs? Excellent points to make. So more studies needed. We have some more data to look at in the future. Absolutely. Now, any other developments in radiation oncology from this year's um, SNOW meeting? 
um, in glioblastomas and gliomas that you wanted to share? Anything that would impact practice, perhaps? I think one of the other things that I uh, um, would like to mention about that first study with Gervardi and colleagues in the National Cancer Database, the retrospective study for proton application of protons, particularly in younger or as you say, earlier grade gliomas, uh, grade one to two uh, glioma patients is promising, but really the study that we'll be interested in seeing uh, the results of is the NRG BN005 uh, study, which is a randomized study of grade two to three glioma patients that are IDH mutants, so these are better prognosis patients that are being randomized between photons and protons definitively. Um, so I think that's going to be the definitive study to let us know whether there is a superiority equivalence or what are the trade-offs um, with proton radiation. Excellent. The, well, yes, and ma'am. then in regards to the other um, data that's being presented at yes. uh, SNOW this year on radiation therapy, I think we see a, a widespread of types of studies. We see studies that are... Um, looking at novel roles of imaging, how can we better define where the tumor is so we know what to treat. Um, there are studies that are looking at tumor treating fields um, that basically um, reaffirm the, the workflow, the ability to do this, the potential implications if we want to integrate this up front with radiation. So they're all kind of like feasibility yes. preliminary type studies. Um, there are studies that are also looking at toxicity and uh, humbling us to the radiation side effects such as microvascular uh, injury um, that we want to pay attention to. Um, we also look at um, things about salvage therapy, re-irradiation. This is feasible. Many of us do it, but it's nice to be able to capture that data and share it with the, the greater medical community who don't practice this more regularly to um, give them some guidance um, of what others who or at higher volume brain tumor treatment centers uh, are, are practicing. Absolutely, that information should never stay siloed, should be spread yeah. you know, to the interprofessional community, taking care of our patients. Excellent, we wanna thank you so much for sharing your expertise and for being here at Practice Update and hope to have you back soon. Thank you very much. And to our viewers, thank you again for joining us for this Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula, please join us again soon.